Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome. Bienvenue. Bienvenue. Welcome. My name is Kelly Lamb. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Mila. And as many of you continue to remain safely at home, or for those that across the country where businesses are reopening, we encourage everybody to remain safe. We're bringing you now the ninth week of Mila Live, where we've been able to interact with you, our customers, to be able to answer questions you've had about appliances that you have in your home or actually appliances that you've been interested in purchasing. As part of this initiative over the last nine weeks, an understanding that many smaller businesses across the country right now are being challenged with the situation that we're all in. We wanted to be able to utilize Meal Alive to support some of these businesses across the country. So about two weeks ago, we started a new campaign called hashtag Mila Dines Local. And what we've done with this initiative is we've challenged restaurateurs and chefs across the country to share with us one of their signature dishes. And we've been inviting them to cook with us on Meal Alive. It gives them the opportunity to talk a bit about their restaurant, the situation that they're in right now, in order for all of us across the country and their local communities to be able to support them. This today's session, we're very, very excited to actually travel all the way to the West Coast to have a very special restaurant, Babel Restaurant, with Chef Trevor Bird join us today. Hey, Trevor, I know you can hear me. Hopefully, I you can. can. I can. Great. Well, uh, I want to welcome you to uh, Mila Live and our new campaign, hashtag uh, Mila Dines Local. I really appreciate it. It's a little early for you guys out on the West Coast, a little bit. Uh, but thanks for joining us. Well, it's, it's 10 a.m., so, do, you know, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. So uh, many of you obviously will know Trevor from his uh, amazing appearance on Top Chef Canada, which, you know, I'm sure we'll have some questions later on. Uh, but to kick things off, Trevor, maybe you can tell us a little bit about Fable, um, the background of Fable, how it started, uh, and kind of what's the philosophy at the restaurant? Yeah, so Fable is a short term from farm to table mashed into one word. I always thought it was ridiculous. People love it. <laughs> so Fable wins. Um, <laughs> the restaurant was born out of Restaurant Wars on Top Chef Canada season one. We had to develop a restaurant in 15 minutes. Uh, and we developed Fable, and we won, and everybody loved it, and now everybody still loves it. So it was a nice little, nice little caveat there uh, to actually opening the real thing. Um, you know, with these times and being so challenging, and you know, who knows what's going to happen with so many of the restaurants in. I, you're in a bit of a different spot, Ontario, than than BC. We're starting to reopen a little bit, but I mean, it's uh, it's pretty nerve wracking times ahead. So we don't really know what's going to happen. So we're taking Fable and kind of pivoting into virtual cooking classes much like this and we're going to offer this across canada when we're ready so that that's fantastic that, to see you can pivot so quickly um yeah, how well, can how can people experience the restaurant right now or at least the food from the restaurant right now well this is a great way to do it i mean interactive live cooking and we have a whole back-end system set set up where you i mean we we're open thursday to sunday right now just during the really busy times Okay. Um, just because that's about all we can all we can afford to open right now. <laughs> um, but what, what the virtual cooking classes that we're putting in place, uh, you can experience the food here by uh, signing, red, going to FableKitchen.ca, registering for an online cooking course. Um, if you're in Toronto, we're working on logistics there to actually deliver you food, and then I teach you how to cook what gets delivered to you. Um, or uh, we're going to send you a shopping list. You can go do your own shopping, and then I'm going to teach you basically the same thing. So. Uh, that's the best way that you can experience our food here. That's great. So for the days, maybe, uh, Trevor, that you are open, what are some of the menu items that are available for our customers to order from? Yeah, I mean, our, our signature dish here that we're going to make today is a canned tuna. I mean, everybody goes, a canned tuna? Yeah. I don't want to <laughs> eat canned tuna for dinner, but I promise you it is the best quality tuna you could possibly get, and it's delicious. 
Um, you know, our signature dishes are uh, spaghetti and meatballs, which is a duck meatball. The sauce is inside of the meatball with a Parmesan foam on top of it, which was also born out of uh, Top Chef on one episode. Um, we have black pepper jam that usually goes on steak, and then we change up the garnishes seasonally with that. Uh, and our chickpea fritters, and those are kind of like our staples that people keep on coming back for, and the dishes that will put my kid through university. <laughs> well, that, but those sounds like amazing uh, menu experiences that customers at least can take home right now and enjoy safely with their family. So that's uh, fantastic that you're offering yeah. that to them. Yeah, um, and and as so well, what? another thing that's that's going really well. Sorry, sorry, Kelly, if I yeah, can just no, get no, this no, in no, there. Go ahead. Um, no, another cool. thing that's going really well is that with all the canceled events and everything, uh, galas, fundraisers, we're offering this as a pivot to support that, where if you have a 400 person gala, we're going to deliver food to 400 people and then go through like a like a live cooking class with you. And as well, the fundraiser will will kind of curate the night according to their needs, but this is always a portion that can be done for any galas or fundraisers that are not taking place. So that's also a really uh, exciting opportunity that we're taking wow. advantage of. No, that, that actually is very exciting. And we'll, again, we'll recap that too at the end of the session uh, for our viewers out there. So why don't we get Good. cooking? Cause I'm sure everybody's eager to have some canned tuna, so to speak. Um, so I know here, Trevor, uh, on my side, I've got uh, a colleague and product expert, uh, Marilyn, who's actually going to be uh, you're going to guide her through all this so we can actually experience some of that over here. Um, so I'm going to hand it off to Marilyn and uh, let you guys uh, take it away. Thank Beautiful. You. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Hello, Chef Trevor. How are you doing, Marilyn? If I look That's over great. here, if I keep on looking this way, it's because my screen is here. Oh, so okay. I look at the camera there, but I see you there. So <laughs> no problem. I'll, try not, I'll try not to do that too much. Okay. So I'm very excited to be uh, cooking alongside of you right now. Yeah, who doesn't get excited about canned tuna, right? Yeah, well, it's going to be a special one. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us what the ingredients that we'll be um, using, and then we'll go through the steps. All right, so I'll give you the breakdown of what a canned tuna is here. So um, I've said this line probably 3,000 times in my life, so I can do it really quickly. But what it is is a jar of fresh albacore tuna, potatoes, tomatoes, lemon confit, fresh herbs, and olive oil. So you have this right here, and it's all layered in this jar together. And then we poach it in a very low water bath, so everything kind of warms up and the tuna gets nice and soft. Right. Um, when it gets delivered to your table, it gets delivered with a piece of fresh bread, and you're instructed to stab aggressively, mix gently till it looks like canned tuna, put it on your toast and eat it. And that okay. is like, it's a pretty magical thing. So right. to execute this whole dish, um, we're going to need uh roughly 100 grams of albacore tuna so this okay. is a albacore tuna loin caught off the pacific coast we'll need some lemon confit or lemon marmalade um, we'll go into the theory of how to make this but we're not, not actually going to make it because i do want to keep you guys engaged and i don't want to keep you here for three hours making canned tuna so okay. we'll talk about lemon confit making but we won't actually make it um we have some boiled fingerling potatoes. Uh, if you don't have fingerling potatoes, any, any potato would really work. Uh, I would go with a small, a small nugget potato um, yeah. or a white, white flesh potato. We have some beautiful cherry tomatoes from a local farm out here, Winset Farms, which uh, they, they support us year round with our greenhouses and their tomatoes are delicious, amazing product. Right. Um, and some fresh herbs here. We have chives, tarragon and chervil. And uh, if you don't have chives, tarragon, and chervil, any soft herb is going to work. Parsley works well. Dill will work well. Um, yeah, you can't really go well, wrong. All right, because that's what I did. I couldn't find chervil, so I, I picked up the parsley. Yeah. And I'm all good with the chives and the tarragon. You're, you're, you're nailing it. You're winning. Okay. You're winning right now. <laughs> okay. All so, right, what's the first step? Well, the first step, we're, we'll talk about uh, the tuna here. So this is, this is fresh albacore tuna. Now, I personally will never eat red tuna, and I don't think anybody else should either. Um, it's highly unsustainable. Our oceans are already in peril, and no matter how sustainable they say that their red tuna is, ahi tuna, big eye, bluefin, it's not that sustainable because they're actually depleting wild stocks to make this farmed sustainable tuna. And for those of you who don't know, just another fun fact, it takes about six kilos of fresh fish for 
a tuna to gain one kilo of protein or one kilo of weight. So you can kind of balance that out um, of, of like, you have to feed tuna a lot of fish to get bigger. So I always support uh, tuna that is a bit, it, it re reproduces faster. So an albacore tuna will be able to reproduce within five to seven years of its life. Whereas any red flesh tuna is more around the 10 to 12 year range before they can start to reproduce. So that's why their stocks are in such danger right now. Um, right. So, you know, if you, if you just want to not worry about the environment, you can use red tuna too. It will work. I discourage it, but you can. Um, and then I'm more so here to like, just educate people on it. I'm not, I'm not going to shame you for doing it. Um, no, I did but, get uh, the white. Do you have your albacore tuna there, Marilyn? Are you ready? I do. I'm ready. Okay, perfect. So the beautiful thing about albacore tuna is like, this is the fail safe fish. Like you could eat this straight, like, like raw and it's delicious. So what we want to do is just make, cut it into about finger, finger pieces about a finger wide. So we have a piece about that big. Can you guys see that? Okay. That thick. Yeah. I don't know if the lights are getting in the way. There we go. We're going to lay those straight onto our plate. And as many slices as you can get out of the piece that you oh, have. Okay, I was just about to ask you that. There's now, no Trevor, right wrong way here, Marilyn. Question for you, because uh, obviously out of BC and in, in Ontario, maybe more challenging sometimes to get albacore tuna fresh, um, but we can get it through really good suppliers frozen. Is that okay? Absolutely. I mean, this this albacore tuna is frozen. The best way to preserve the freshness is the fishermen on the boat. Like as soon as they catch the fish. They rip off this, I don't mean to be, you know, inappropriate yes. or violent here. They rip off the skin, fillet it, and then put it in their flash freezers. Now, frozen fish is done so efficiently today. People say, oh, I can tell the difference between fresh and, and, and flash frozen. It's like, I guarantee that if you did a taste test, you would not be able to do it if the fish was frozen in a very efficient way. Their blast right. freezers are between minus 60 and minus 80. You can freeze a whole piece of fish in minutes. So the longer it takes to freeze something, the more that ice crystals develop. And when the ice crystals develop, it actually ruins the proteins and punctures all the cells. And that's when right. you get a lot of blading coming out. But I mean, the, the technology today is so advanced that you can freeze fish instantly. There's no ice crystals that form. There's no protein damage. And uh, yeah, I mean, like all, all albacore tuna you get essentially is a frozen product that you can thaw yourself. And I mean, we could literally take this plate right here of raw tuna put some salt on it and some vinegar and eat it. And it would be amazing. Right. Right. Okay. Good. Um, did that answer the question there, Kelly? Yep. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, All right. So where we're, okay. Marilyn, are you with me here? I'm with you. Okay, cool. So we're going to take our tuna on the yes. plate yes. and then a little bit of salt. Like, I, yes. like, okay. So with salt, whenever we're seizing anything in life, you always need more salt than you think you need, okay. especially if you're not a professional chef. So okay. we have, we have a one pinch of salt, a two pinch of salt, a three pinch of salt, and then like a four pinch of salt. Yeah. So we're going to take a four pinch of salt here. Yeah. And we're going to season the one side, the, 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 the four pinch should season one side of the tuna. Yeah. And what, what we say in, in the industry here is we make it rain. Okay. And so then we're going to flip it over. Yeah. We're going to flip our tuna over, grab another, grab like a three pinch for this one. Okay. And then make it rain over your tuna. There you go. Now, that is well seasoned. There should be, it should look like you have a lot of salt on your plate and a it lot does. of salt on the tuna. Yes. You it good? Does. Yeah, I'm good. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're just going to set it aside for now. We're going to let that cure for a little bit. And okay. uh, if, we could, if we could let that cure, I mean, ideally, you know, we're in a video here, so there's going to be a little bit of camera magic. If we could let that cure for about 15, 20 minutes, that would be optimal. Um, but for the sake of the video, we're probably going to cure for about five minutes while we get everything else together. Okay. Um, so that's how we make the cured tuna for now. Now we'll get into the lemon confit or lemon marmalade. So this is a pain in the er to make. Um, okay. you, 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 you don't really want to make this, but because you need, first of all, about a dozen lemons, if not more, maybe two dozen. Uh, okay. You take the skin off by, by peeling it. Then what you need to do is julienne it, which means slice it as fine as you can. And you blanch it three times in water like boiling water, and you have to change the water every time you blanch it. 
So if you have a big kitchen, you can have three pots of boiling water. You can blanch the rind, drain it off, blanch it again, drain it off and blanch it off and drain it again, or you're going to have to do it three changes of water. Um, it's to get the bitterness out of it so that you just have more of a lemon flavor than you do of the bitterness. Now, if that is too much work for you, uh, you can go to the store and just buy some form of like citrus marmalade. Uh, there's a couple of products out there that are okay. Um, the, I still haven't found uh, a good lemon marmalade product. Um, so it, you're, you're just gonna have to do some research out there. But if you do, if you do not want to make this, you can just go buy like orange marmalade or lemon, lemon, right. lime, grapefruit marmalade, and it will work kind of just as good. Um, I took the, uh, purchasing the marmalade route. Can I see the jar that you bought? There's no shame, Marilyn. So oh, please. The jar that I have is, is in the back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will <laughs> grab that for that. Second. It's all, it's all good. It's all good. Okay. So. So after we have the, the, the yep. lemon rind blanched, we're yes. going to put it into a pot, equal okay. parts, sugar, lemon rind, and then water. So you're basically making like a jam, like a, like a lemon rind jam. Um, okay. And then we're just going to cook that down until it's super thick. Yes. And then season it with lemon juice. And that's what lemon marmalade is and lemon okay. coffee. All right. um, and, that's, and that's what we have here. Yes. Um, so that's, that's what I'm going to say about that. Uh, yeah. And then we have our potatoes. Now, potatoes. I like to use fingerling potatoes. Like I said, you can use any potato you want. Um, the secrets behind boiling potatoes. When you're cooking a fingerling potato, you want to cook it in water that is as salty as the sea. So okay. the, the magic ratio for, like, whenever you go to a restaurant, you're like, oh, my God, these vegetables and these potatoes are so good. Rule number one, an under-seasoned potato is a crime. Can you agree with that? Yes. Definitely. Yeah, it's brutal, right? Um, so, so the the magic ratio for salt to water is one gallon of water, which is three point nine liters of water, or something like that. I might be a little wrong. I'm apologize if I am. Uh, to one cup of salt. Now, one cup of salt is is a lot. It's about yeah. it's this filled twice with salt. That's one hundred twenty five mils. So it's this thing filled twice with salt to four liters of water. Um, that way your potatoes will be seasoned when you eat them and they'll be delicious. Um, so when you boil them, you actually, a potato that boils is a potato that spoils. Eh? So you don't actually want to boil your potato, but you just want to simmer them. Like you want the water to kind of be like, boop, boop, boop. It, it, like that would be a boil. So you just want like the, the water kind of, kind of chilling like that. And then as soon as your potatoes are soft, turn the water, turn the water off. So it's not, there's no heat and okay. you just leave it in the warm water. Okay. That creates a really creamy, deliciously textured potato um, and let it cool down in that water. And then that's what we have here. So what we're going to do with this, Marilyn, you with yes. me here? I'm with okay. you. Okay. We're going to take, we're going to take these potatoes and we're just going to put them into a bowl. Oh, and we're just going to cook. I'm going to cook right now. Right now. Yes, because yeah. I, I bought the, the nugget, nugget ones, ones, the small the round ones. ones. Yeah, we're just going to uh, crush these, crush these loosely. Yeah. yeah. And then, if you did not put salt in your water and you need salt, just give them a little taste. If you don't feel they're salty enough, you just want to add a little bit of salt to your potato. I didn't okay. put any salt in the water in these potatoes, FYI. Um, oh. oh, then I'm going to I know. I yeah. <laughs> so we're just going to toss so Trevor, those around so in there. Trevor, we have to we have to say as well. Uh, you know, we're we're in the benefit of having a very big kitchen here, so we actually uh, steam the potatoes in our steam oven. So we actually definitely did not put water or salt. Yeah, in that's the water. that's totally cool too. And like you know, at the end of the day, you're you're going to use less salt if you season them afterwards. So right. I mean, yeah, the, the the salt just won't be in the potato. It'll just be on right. the exterior potato. It's still going to be good. Maybe not Michelin star quality, but it's still going to be good, okay? Um, okay? So once we have our potatoes there, we have it seasoned. We're just going to yes. put a little bit of, we have some olive oil here. Yeah. We're just going to put in a little bit of olive oil and just toss them around. And oh, then- so that's why you and have I, the, the bowl. Yeah. And I hope that everybody can uh, can boil a potato at home. If I, if I made that a little bit too advanced and I didn't show you, I apologize. Um, but always put your potatoes, start them in cold water, bring them up, lots of salt, cook them off, 
Um, and I'm going to say the more you like, if ever you're doing, if you ever want like a crispy roasted potato, the more you cook a potato, the more delicious it's going to be. So if you take a potato and boil it and then crush it and then toss it like we did and then roast it in an oven, it's going to get a beautiful, like crispy exterior and like nice and soft on the inside. It's, uh, it's absolutely fantastic. So right. the next thing we have is our yes. tomatoes. Yes. Now at my restaurant, um, I get the guys to peel the tomatoes, but I'm not going to do that to you. Um, so we're just going to take our, put our tomatoes here and cut okay. them in half. Okay. okay. I, actually I actually went ahead, ahead and, and cut them, them as well. well. Yeah, you so did. I, You're already ahead of me. I'm ahead, I'm ahead of the game, of the game on, this on this one. one. Yeah. Okay. So, so since you're winning, you're just gonna have to wait for me here. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> um, okay, now we have the herbs. So the with herbs, the herbs, yes. we're just gonna give it all like a nice rough chop, um, just to make a little like, like seasoning sprinkle, if you will. So clean the knife down. Yes. And then we take the chives. Now this yes. is, I don't know what to call this. I call it a seasle of chives. I don't know why, but just growing up in kitchens, that's what we called it. Did you seasle those chives? I don't even know what that means, but <laughs> apparently that means that means to cut it thin. So try to cut your your chives as thin as possible. And you know, it's always important to curl your fingers when you're holding your knife and your chives so you're not yes. cutting off your the tips of your fingers and just make nice little sliding actions into your chives. Right. right. So sorry, sorry, Trevor, I actually already as well, I already chopped my chives, so they're all done, very small pieces. You are, you, <laughs> you want to be my sous chef? <laughs> you're so organized. I Oh, well, I was kind of reading some of the notes that you said, so it said chop chives, so I chop chives. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so we have that, and then we have a bit of chervil and tarragon here. We're just yep. gonna put that down, yep. and we're just gonna like gently just run our knife through that as well. Um, not too okay. small, because they these are uh, fine herbs, and we, yes. just wanna, we just wanna not bruise them, but just slice them so they're nice and delicate. All right, okay. once we have that there, now it's time to actually build our canned tuna. Okay. You ready for it? I'm ready for this. I'm just preparing okay. my table here just so I can add everything to this. So I'm ready when you are. All right, so um, I, you know, trying to do this thing and make it taste the same like 50 times a night or whenever we're super busy, whatever that is, Right. It needs to be weighed out uh, pretty precisely so that people have the same experience every time they come back. So, uh, you know, we use a scale for this, but if you don't yes. have one, don't stress. Like I said, no matter what, it's going to be good. It's, you know, you're not, you don't need to right. serve this. To, you're, you're cooking this for yourself. So um, keep in mind, I like, you can't really. I want it to be really... as good as yours, Trevor. Just, okay. I just want you to know this. I need it to be as good as yours. <laughs> It, but the thing is, is, it will be amazing no matter what okay. you do. So, All right. so you want to take about a big tablespoon of potatoes and put that in your jar. Just like that. I don't know if that's overexposed okay. light or not. And then we're going to, uh, to crush down the potatoes a little bit. Just take your spoon and, and just get your potatoes like down into the jar. Okay. Press it down a little bit. Yep. Then we're going to take about one teaspoon of the lemon marmalade and drop that on top. Then we're gonna take two Do I need to spread this lemon marmalade at all over the uh, potatoes or just drop it in? You can just drop it in because at the end we're gonna mix everything together. Okay, already? We'll get together with the magic one instead. Yes. So the lemon marmalade's in, we'll take the two half tomatoes, two yes. half tomatoes go in, just push them in there. Okay. And then we will take our tuna that has a salt all over it. Yes. There, and we're gonna put that as one layer in the, in the jar. Okay. Then we're gonna take a small sprinkling of the fresh herbs that we cut up and drop yep. that on top of the tuna. And then we're gonna go another layer of our one teaspoon of marmalade. Okay. And then one more piece of our tuna. And just put that on top. And that's like the show piece of tuna right there. That's like your, when you open the jar, that's the first thing you're gonna see. So you kind of want oh, this, okay. I'm, gonna come, I'm gonna come over here to the camera. You wanna make that look real nice at the top. Okay, and I then you have like, really nice too. Yeah, yes. of course yeah. it does, you're pro. Right. Look I'm at that chef jacket. <laughs> 
Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Awesome. Did you so, see it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So then we're going to take a little bit of olive oil and you want about um, a tablespoon of olive oil, but really with your jar, you just want to take the olive oil and put it in until it just covers the tuna. Oh, okay. All right. Like don't, and, and again, if you put a little bit too much in, that's okay. Um, it's, it's not going to ruin anything. So once we have that built, yep. we're going to, we're going to seal the jar up yes, like this, and you are ready to cook that. Now that you can leave this in your fridge up to three to four days. Um, albacore tuna, you thaw it, you cut it, you cure it, you put it in the jar. It's going to be good for three or four days. So, okay. um, so this can be saved. If you have a party tomorrow night or the next night, you can take this, put it in your fridge and cook it when you're ready. Now let's get into the cooking of fish. This is a pet peeve of mine, Marilyn. Yes. A hot piece of fish is an overcooked piece of fish. Okay. Fish should never be hot ever. Okay. So at my restaurant, we serve our fish medium rare uh, to medium, um, unless otherwise specified. That means that the fish could never get above 50 degrees Celsius. Can you picture 50 degrees Celsius, Marilyn? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's like, that's, like, that's like a hot day in Vegas when you're walking down the street and that warm ass breeze is like, <sighs> Um, so you could actually take a piece of fish and leave it outside and it would literally cook in that sun. So when we cook this canned tuna, we don't want our water to be too hot. So at the restaurant, we cook this in what's called an immersion circulator. Are you familiar with what that is? Yes, yes. Because our steam oven or our steam combi oven, we have a um, sous vide function that's in there. That's amazing. So, so what you'd yes. want to do with your Mila sous vide fancy steam oven <laughs> Yeah. is set that set that guy to 50 degrees Celsius. Um, okay. At that point, you can take all, if you have a couple of canned tunas, if you're having a party, you know, you can take a dozen of these and yes. slip them into your, into your oven and leave them there for 20 minutes to four hours and they're never going to overcook because okay. they're, they're being held at 50 degrees Celsius. And just to give you another idea of like what 50 is, fish actually starts to break down at 40 degrees Celsius, which is a little rare for some people. That's how I like to eat my fish, but that's like, that's the temperature of a hot tub. So if you were to take a hot tub with a whole fish, you could hot tub and eat your fish at the same time. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> you could hot tub and eat your fish. I don't fish recommend it. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. It's disgusting. Okay, so I get, what, the, what the point I'm making is, is that fish cooks at an extremely low temperature. So right. we don't want to overcook the canned tuna or the fresh albacore tuna. Uh, we just want to make it nice and soft and delicate uh, when we go to mix it. So my recommendation is if you do not have a Mila steam oven or an immersion circulator, which constantly regulates the temperature of your water, you're just going to want to boil some water. You just bring it to a boil. When it comes to a boil, you turn it off wait five minutes and you drop the canned tuna in the water, which I have some back here. So I'm gonna drop this in like this, that water is still very hot and just have the water completely submerge the can okay. completely over the top. So I'm gonna leave that, I already, I already have one cooked off, so relax, we don't need to hang out for 20 minutes while that cooks, but I would say leave it in there anywhere from 20 to minutes to an hour. Uh, and um, it's gonna gently warm together, the olive oil is going to like, season everything and the salt and the potatoes and the lemon it's it's really nice um and the last thing we're gonna have to do here is toast lovely pieces of bread now this is uh, our fresh made focaccia but you can use any kind of bread you want um yes. you could i think you have sour sourdough over there right marilyn i do i have sourdough yeah sourdough is a great we serve it with sourdough at the restaurant um we just had some leftover focaccia so i'm going to use that for you okay uh but uh, what we need to do to toast the bread is get on a, do you have a pan there? Do you have like a working station? Okay, yes, so get a little- I'm working away here. Perfect, okay. get a pan on over yes. medium heat. Okay. And then put a little bit of olive oil onto your bread with whatever bread you're using. And we're just going to put that Does olive it matter oil- Does thickness at all, Trevor? Not do really, I mean, no, no I mean, okay. the, it, it's up to you. I like a big thick piece of bread. Perfect, um, that's what we I've cut it too. Yeah, see that's because you know because you're a pro. <laughs> that's why. So you get it you get a nice thick piece of bread 
yeah. you get some olive oil on your bread. Yeah. And then you put the bread down in the pan. And we're just going to turn the heat down to like medium, low, low, medium. And just leave it sit there. And I will show you guys how to finish off this beautiful can tuna while our uh, bread finishes toasting there. So okay. what happens here? Do you have do you have the tuna that we made in a yes. rush before this class started? Yes, I do. Okay. I have it ready. Awesome. All right. And then the other thing, do you have a tablespoon or a teaspoon on you? Yes, I do. Perfect. So we're going to, when this gets served to the restaurant, yep. at the restaurant, you say, this here is your canned tuna. It's layers of fresh albacore tuna, potatoes, tomatoes, lemon oil, olive oil, and herbs. You're instructed to, we're going to put a little bit of herbs more on top, and we're going to put a little bit of Malden salt on top. Okay. I don't know if you have Malden salt there. Do you have Malden salt there? Uh, no, I didn't have that. That wasn't on my all list, good. but that's okay. It's all good. Just, Just a little bit of time. salt. Yeah. Yes. Take, okay, your, so take your spoon. Yeah. And we're going to stab aggressively. So stab it until all the pieces come apart. You see that tuna is just starting to break up there. So we're going to yep. stab this so that the olive oil gets worked into all the potatoes and the tuna breaks up. So stab aggressively, stab, 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 stab. Just check on your bread to make sure you're not burning it because nobody likes burnt bread. Yep, nope, my bread is good. There we go. So we're going to stab all this together. Okay. Let's and then it once here. it... Once it looks like canned tuna, it's a, and it's like picture like a like a almost like a tuna sandwich. So if you're making like a like a canned tuna sandwich, once that looks like like your mom's canned tuna, yes, there that is ready to go, and then we serve that with our nice nicely toasted focaccia. I'll grab a, I'll grab a small plate here to just uh, yes. show you what it looks like. Sorry. Do. So we serve this just like that with nice, thick, crusty bread on the side. And you just take your... Oh, I see how you've done that. You've put it on the plate, the side of the plate. Yeah. OK. And then I just want to make sure it's in the frame here. So then all you'd have to do is pick up your canned tuna yep. on, the, on the thing, put it on your toast, just like that. And you have canned tuna here. Let me get close to you so, so we know what it looks is... like here. Like the, oh, can you see, see that there? Yes. Yeah, yeah, look that at that. Boom. Great. And then you just want to eat that right there, and you win the day. OK. Just almost caught up to you. I'm just uh, still toasting away here. Oh, no so, worries. So Trevor, as Marilyn's finishing up there, a question for you uh, from one of our viewers right now. Um, yep. Taking you back in time to your days at Top Chef. Yeah. Uh, what was your? PTSD. <laughs> exactly before time. Just joking. What's um, what was your actually favorite challenge? It could uh, be restaurant warriors because you won, but I was like a nervous wreck the whole time. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite ones was um, we had we had a time limit, and we had to. It was like a. It was like a. Uh, we had to French a lamb rack. And then cut shallots, and then uh, oh, was that the, peel uh, like grapes. The quick fire uh, relay one. Yeah, or? yeah, and it was like it was like I, I I like nailed it. Like I am really quick at doing a lot of that stuff. And then I failed on the peeling grapes because I don't think I've ever peeled grapes before, and I, I lost it on that one. But that was definitely my favorite challenge for sure. Okay. Got me a chance to like flex my speed skills. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Trevor, so, I'm actually going to uh, put some of this tuna on the bread. Yeah, do it. You get your tuna onto the bread, and then that's that's the that's the canned tuna right there. So this is we serve this at a lot of uh, catering functions. Um, we serve it in the restaurant. Oh. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a fun kind of interactive dish when you're sitting down and and getting into it. And uh, yeah, and we Trevor, actually have. Is this, is this typically an appetizer at the, at the restaurant? Yeah, yeah, it's a really nice dish to share amongst friends. And, you know, I'd say between two and four people, everybody, like if it's four people, everybody gets one piece of bread with a bit on it. 
um, and they get to try a whole bunch of different stuff. So yeah. It looks really great. But even for customers right now, Trevor, that's a great dish to take home to share with. Oh, absolutely. 100% it is. Yeah, so um, right. I don't know if you guys have any more questions or, or any comments, but I'd love to answer any questions you guys have about, you know, cooking or anything out here in Vancouver, maybe where we're at as opposed to Ontario. And uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, you know, I, I think definitely that's, uh, so maybe talk about some of, you know, I think, again, you talked about being farm to table, um, which obviously is very different based on where you're at. Um, so what are some of the real, I guess, highlights in your area where you guys are located in, uh, in Vancouver right now, as far as being farm to table? What, what's some of the produce that you're seeing right now that are, uh, that are hitting its peak? Yeah, rhubarb's coming up here. Uh, rhubarb's doing really strong. Asparagus is just about to come in. Um, and those are probably, you know, the, the spring, the spring good ones, uh, peas, snap peas are coming in. Uh, yeah, that's, those are the strong games right now that are, that are looking really good. So um, then you're obviously going to take that and incorporate it, uh, I would assume into your menu right now. Um, but based on, you know, again, the times that we're in right now, how often are you changing the menu for customers that are coming to do, uh, takeout with you? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not, we just opened like last oh, okay. week. Okay. So um, our takeout, we were doing an initiative to raise money to feed Vancouver's most vulnerable and uh, some of the, the hospitals that were out here, but we really didn't get impacted. So um, we did that and really focused on that. We didn't focus too much on the takeout game. Okay. Um, so that's what, that's what kept us going. Uh, we were making 200 meals a day uh, to go down to SROs, which are single resident residence occupancies. Uh, for kind of uh, low income families uh, and we were we were donating the food to old age homes and uh, we were we were part of a thing called the food coalition uh, in Vancouver so if anyone wants to check that out go to foodcoalition.ca make a donation it goes a super long way right now um, and we just opened our doors and getting back into the swing of things since like last week so this is okay. all very new to us it's like we're reopening a restaurant essentially um, to figure out how to work within the regulations I mean Things are changing weekly, so we need to adjust weekly. It's pretty, it's, it's, it's challenging. Like there's a yeah, lot of challenges guys, coming up here. You guys are definitely- So in terms of using, you know, using, like, you know menu, menu Kelly is, is not a super big priority right now because there is a thousand fish we have to fry. And right. of course we need to worry about the food, but uh, you know, it's the plexiglass, how far the tables are apart. Right. And that, that right now is much more of a concern. Yeah, no, and, and I think the health and safety of, not only your staff, but obviously your guests have to be uh, priority. And again, I think you guys are obviously in BC a little ahead of us in Ontario as far as reopening goes. So, you know, I think uh, as an overall business, we'll take some learnings from uh, you guys. You know, we've just also recently reopened our experience center in downtown Vancouver as well. So that's been, uh, we've had to kind of trip and figure out what to do there as well. So, uh, but that's good to hear that you guys are, are slowly reopening customers can at least uh experience some of the food that you're turning out right now so that's great yeah yeah hey, uh, trevor we do have a, a live question coming in from one of our viewers if you wouldn't mind answering it yeah um, for sure so umar jan uh umar welcome to uh hashtag mila dines local with fable and and chef trevor uh trevor the question that uh, umar has is uh, does Chef Trevor believe in gas or induction for cooking at home? Um, I am a, I would love it if everything was induction. Um, super easy to clean, no carbon on your pots, heat, very reactive. Uh, I would definitely go induction. It just, it's just cleaner and nicer and uh, you can, you can wipe things down, especially if you have one of the, the high powered induction tops that you can slide your pans all over the top where there's not just like circles, but you can actually like use the whole thing. I mean, right. it's so versatile. And for me, my dream house in Vancouver, which I probably won't ever have, just joking, uh, <laughs> will have that in it. Yeah. Well, that's actually, that's really actually interesting to hear from a professional chef, because obviously in your restaurants, a lot of times you guys will use obviously gas. In Europe, it's different as a, as a German brand. We see a, a definite trend even on the professional side in Europe uh, a lot of restaurants using induction, maybe in combination with some gas, but uh, uh, in North America, I think we're a little, uh, we're not quite there yet as far as induction goes. So that's, 
Agreed. That's interesting to hear your opinion of, on, on that. The big thing um, is to clean up though. It's just the, it's the one wipe. Like if things right. boil over, you just wipe it clean. Whereas like if you're on gas, it gets in between everything, your grates are dirty and blah. So that's why I prefer it. Okay. Um, so Trevor, I want to say thanks uh, on behalf of Marilyn, myself, the Mila team here for, for joining us today. Um, let's talk a little bit. Let's recap a little bit if we can um, about, uh, so first of all, an amazing dish yes. that uh, I think you've, you've shown us is a bit of labor of love, a bit of fun. Um, I know the crew here is salivating uh, to get to try Marilyn's attempt at, at your dish. So we'll definitely uh, share that as a, a group, uh, all those social distancing uh, once we're done here. So we're looking forward to that. But also I think uh, for your guests um, that can take that home, I think that's a great dish to have. Yeah, um, thanks a lot, Kelly. Appreciate that. So let's just uh, talk a little bit about Fable again. So uh, online cooking, they can, Trevor, they, they can have some fun with you online, obviously, right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm putting together the process to scale it out to Toronto and across Canada. Uh, it okay. will happen. It's coming. Um, so, but you can go check out and get more information on www.fablekitchen.ca. There is a pop-up that will take you to our virtual cooking website there. And uh, you can just kind of, creep around that for a little bit. And then in, in a couple of months, uh, we'll hopefully be able to uh, offer this to as many people as possible. That's great. And Trevor, from uh, our viewers right now that are in the Vancouver or BC area, um, how can they best find out? Uh, I would imagine your website would be the easiest way to find out how to get takeout, your hours. Again, what hours are, uh, what days a week are you open and from what hour, what uh, times? Right now? Thursday to Saturday dinner service, uh, five okay. to 10. Uh, and then Sunday brunch, we will be opening for Saturdays. And depending on how this whole virtual cooking thing goes, if, if, it, if it's taken off, we're probably not gonna open much more than that. And uh, okay. yeah, like I said, we're, we're adapting week to week right now. Uh, we're seeing what's working. We're, we're kind of playing around because we're, we're, we don't know. Because I mean, like, I can only have 20 people in my restaurant at once. So we need, right. to, we need to pivot to make this work. So um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna keep on going with the with the punches okay and for uh, people to order for takeout trevor can they do it online or should they call or yeah they can call the... uh 604-732-1322 604-732-1322 but you have it's to be like, in vancouver it's That's like a it. telephone <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally um but yeah you can do that and you can go online and I, I don't have any takeout system set up yet uh but we will and yeah okay well, again, uh, Trevor, uh, on behalf of the team here at Mila Canada, we want to thank you really for taking time out of your busy day to join us on uh, hashtag Mila Dines Local. Um, as part of this initiative, uh, we have worked with you to purchase uh, 100 meals from you, which jointly uh, with Fable and, and you, we've uh, donated. Maybe you can talk a little bit about um, who we've actually donated to in Vancouver. Yeah. So thank you so much, by the way, like it really means a lot to me. And like, you know, it's so great what you guys are doing because the, the, our restaurants right now, like we need, we need any support we can get. And I just like, thank you so, so no, much for your for sure. support. Um, it goes a long, long way, you know, it keeps my guys employed. Uh, it gives food to people in need and uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, oh, so, no. so your donation uh, went to the women's children's hospital in BC. Uh, that's where I've been gearing most of my donations towards. So um, anybody at the hospital that is in need of food has access to that. And they set up, a, they set up all these systems so that uh, whoever needs it has free access to meals and they need uh, like 700 meals a day. So we were allowed to, we were able to, uh, to help them out with that, which is amazing. Fantastic. Well, Trevor, uh, thank you again uh, for that. Thanks for joining us. For those viewers out there, whether you're from uh, Toronto, Montreal, obviously in Vancouver, uh, be sure to visit uh, Fable and Trevor's website to find out more about these uh, interactive online cooking classes. I think that's uh, going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and again, the, the great part about that is it really doesn't matter where you are across the country. Uh, you may have to go buy your own groceries, but uh, I'm sure on uh, Fable's website, you can learn more about that. We will for, figure it out so we can deliver it to your door across Canada, though. We will figure it out. That's my goal. And once you do that, let us know as well, Trevor, because uh, we can, uh, Marilyn can cook for the team over yes. here and uh, yep. cook with you. So.
Well, I That'll think we good. might need to do a do a Mila studio <laughs> kitchen to be able to I, show everybody how to cook. I, I think that would be fantastic. So we'll definitely uh, talk afterwards about that. Great, Kelly. We'd, we'd love to have you. So um, again, uh, for those of our uh, viewers and customers that are actually from the Vancouver area, uh, take the opportunity to support Trevor and his team down there and, and also experience some fantastic food uh, with your family at home. It's a perfect time to, uh, to do that. So um, very, very lastly, on behalf of the Mila Canada team, uh, Fable uh, and, and Trevor and his team, we want to send a very, very big thank you to all the frontline workers out there right now across the communities, um, across Canada right now, who are really uh, our heroes uh, to ensure that everybody that needs medical support um, needs to go pick up their groceries, need food delivery, um, needs to be able to take public transportation, are supporting everybody right now. Again, a very, very big thank you uh, on all of our behalfs right now. We want to thank you for joining us on Mila Live today. Uh, for those of you that are interested, at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we actually have another session with our partners from Zwilling Henkel, uh, and they're actually going to be uh, cooking with us on induction. We're going to be talking about induction cooking, and they're going to give you uh, really tips and tricks on picking the right cookware, because as good as our induction technology is, you also need the right cookware. So be sure to join us at 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time for that session. Trevor, thank you again. Enjoy uh, your day. Keep busy, as I'm sure your team will. Thanks, guys. Um, and we want to wish everybody else out there a fantastic day. Uh, have a safe day, and we look to talk to you again. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, all. Thanks, Marilyn. You did great. Thank you. Yeah.